This morning, a Missouri man is getting ready to leave prison near after nearly a decade for eight years. 48 Hours correspondent Aaron Moriarty has been shedding light on holes in the prosecution's case against Ryan Ferguson. Tuesday, his conviction was thrown out, and Aaron was there when family members learned the news and called Ferguson. She was the only one to interview him yesterday, and Aaron joins us from Columbia, Missouri, with her original reporting. Aaron, what a story. Good morning to you. Good morning. This is a very significant spot because in 2005, I was here in this courthouse when Ryan Ferguson was convicted of murder. And now I'm back as an appellate court throws out that conviction. The waiting. To come up any moment. It's agonizing. Three minutes and counting. Every Tuesday morning, Ryan Ferguson's parents search the Missouri Appellate Court's website. How's your heart doing now? For a decision that could change their son's life. It's there. Oh my gosh. It came less than 24 hours ago. Convictions are vacated. The court has overturned his murder conviction. <laughs> oh my God. Hey Ryan. Hi. Good seeing you. 48 Hours has covered Ryan Ferguson's case since his original trial in 2005. All right, please. From the beginning, there was something so troubling about it. The defendant pulled off the victim's own belt and used it to strangle him to death. Guilty of murder in the second degree. Ferguson was convicted of killing Kent Heithold, a popular newspaper sports editor, in the early morning following Halloween 2001. There has never been any physical evidence connecting Ryan Ferguson to the murder. He was convicted primarily on the word of Charles Erickson, a man who claimed to be Ryan's accomplice, although he seemed to know very little about the crime when police interviewed him. We know for a fact that his belt was ripped off of his pants and he was strangled with his belt. Really? Does that ring a bell? Not at all. The other key witness was Jerry Trump, a janitor, who claimed he saw Ryan at the crime scene. Would you point to that individual, please? Yes. After a 48 hours report raised questions about Ryan's conviction, Kathleen Zellner, a powerful attorney, took the case pro bono. She joined forces with Ryan's father, Bill, to prove Ryan's innocence. How many times have you gone down to the crime scene? 40 or 50 at least. In time, both witnesses recanted under oath and admitted lying at trial. I did lie. I lied. Still, Ferguson's appeals were denied until yesterday when the appellate court threw out the conviction. It's a wonderful feeling. It's, it's the best feeling in the world. The court said prosecutors were aware of problems with Jerry Trump's testimony, but concealed them from the defense. Well, Ryan, you must be in a state of shock. I know we are. Ryan remains behind bars. The state will decide whether or not to retry him. He hopes to be home soon. I've been looking forward to Thanksgiving for so long. And to know that I might have that, and that might be my first holiday with my family, with the people I love. It looks like Thanksgiving dinner is on the table. I feel good, but I haven't been able to actually enjoy it yet, you know, be in the moment. So I think once I'm with my family, you know, I think that's when it'll probably hit me and I step foot out there and I can hug my mom, hug my dad. Take care. I'll see you on the outside soon. All right. As, as we speak right now, Ryan is still in prison, although technically he is now not guilty of any crime. His attorney, Kathleen Zellner, has already filed a motion to have him released on bond. Aaron, what an incredible story you're reporting leading to his release um, to be innocent and having been in jail for that long. Do you know when he'll get out of jail? Well, I mean, his attorney told me that he could actually get out today. I don't know if that's really a realistic hope. Um, if the state decides not to fight that motion, he could be released today. The state may take some time and it might take a week to two weeks, but I know the attorney would like to see him out for Thanksgiving. Does the state have any other leads as to who might have committed the crime? Well, there has always been one person, the, the last person to see the victim, um, the last person known to have seen the victim before he was killed. And even uh, the appellate court decision really focuses on this one individual, all the contradictions in the statements he's made. Um, maybe at some point this case will be resolved, but I mean, it's already been since 2001. And Aaron, just on a personal note, I mean, how does it feel? I mean, 
in many ways, had you not been on this story, reporting it, he might still be in jail. How does that feel? Well, because we've really seen this case change. When we first started, we didn't have any idea whether Ryan Ferguson was innocent or guilty. And then seeing all this new evidence come out because of continuing to report, um, I mean, it feels great, but he still has a long road to go. The state could appeal this decision. The state could retry him. Um, but yes, today it feels it feels pretty great. <laughs> great it certainly does. reporting, Aaron. Thank you so much.